Welcome in. Good evening. Welcome to the Lawn Enquirer podcast. It's Jeremy Warner, Derek Piper at the State Farm Center. Yes, we are not held hostage right now, but we had to move because inside the arena, the dudes clean it up and, and bless them, man. They are blasting the hair metal. I heard Slippery When Wet playing. Uh, then I think it went right into, who was it, Def Leppard? Uh, I don't know, Piper, your your catalog. I don't know if it goes no, into the, the hair metal. but I don't know anything about that. But uh, Your I know radio was- partner would have been doing this he was feeling time. it i don't know if you could hear what we would be saying about the the game but uh we're instead of rocking out we're going to try to give you some rock solid analysis on this game so before i give my top five hair metal songs uh <laughs> we will dive into the illinois basketball impressive 82 75 win over the number one ranked team in the country what a win for illinois derek it doesn't count that's the only sad thing but what a fun night at the state farm center Bill Self is back in the building. Hunter Dickinson is back in the building and goes home with another loss, as our boy Trevor Valise pointed out on the field of 68 Twitter, which was a great graphic there, Trevor. Uh, but a fun night of basketball, Derek, and a really encouraging one for Illinois. So we can joke about how much do we react to this. Let's overreact to this. But if you're an Illinois fan, how do you feel about this game, Derek? It's feel really good. Uh, I mean, I don't think anybody's kidding themselves into saying that, oh, you know, walk-ons are playing and they were trying – a bunch of stuff that these teams aren't going to do in the season or anything like they team they played to win. Like you look at Kansas's main guys and Dewan Harris, I think sat maybe on the bench for three to four minutes and Dickinson logs 35 and obviously on Illinois side as well. They, they load up on, on the veterans getting a, a big share of, of those minutes. You don't see a lot of Draven Gibbs Lawhorn. Don't see a lot of Nicola Moretti, Monty Hansberry. So yes, this is a game that teams are still working on things and trying to, to get acclimated. I mean, Kansas, you're, you're obviously in certain Hunter Dickinson in the mix and, and they're feeling some things out. But uh, for Terrence to show up like that in a, a high level battle between him and Kevin McCuller, I wrote about that going into this game. It, it, that thing delivered, man. Those guys had uh, words for each other seemingly after every shot that, that one another hit. And uh, that was uh, that was fun to watch. It, it was it, it was big time. Lean back and uh, enjoy the popcorn while those guys go to work, too. And uh, I think Coleman the way that he was able to stretch the floor and shoot the ball. And uh, then down the stretch, just having those those vets. Uh, I think there's a number of different things you can pinpoint and and kind of try to dissect. Uh, I will say it's going to be interesting. Late game with the lead without a point guard on the floor. Now, that's not to say that Brad it won't have Ty down there at some stretch, but you could even argue is Ty a, a true point. But uh, to have Marcus kind of bring the ball up and Illinois navigating that, I think that's going to be an interesting experiment throughout the season. So in a one-game sample size – Illinois takes a good amount of threes. They make a good amount of threes. Uh, they're able to pull out a win against a team that's ranked number one in the country, a, a talented team, not a very deep Kansas team, but a, obviously a good one. And to have Self in the building and have Dickinson in the building and Illinois on the right side, you got to feel good about that. Yeah, 82-75, Terrence Shannon Jr., 28 points. Coleman Hawkins, 14. Um, Quincy Garrier, 13 points, nine rebounds. Most of that production came late. You talk about closer. He was your closer, taking people off the dribble, uh, hit a big three, but got to the free throw line and made eight of his 10. And Marcus Damask, quiet, uh, 11 points, but a lot of veterans on that court. And Derek, maybe this is the A game. How many 28 point performances is Terrence Shane going to have? Probably a couple, but how many times are you going to make 11 to 27 threes? You hope a couple. But if this is your A game, This is a really good A game. This is nice to have in your bag that this team is capable of it. And never at any point during this game, Derek, did I think Illinois was less talented, didn't stack up against Kansas. They had the size to compete against Kansas. They had the depth to compete against Kansas. And they looked like the more veteran team at times. They executed uh, better than Kansas. And that goes to a lot of what these transfers add around Terrence Shannon Jr. and Coleman Hawkins. I think – you know, for Coleman, I think these guys are going to bring so much, whether it's Gary Air getting after the glass or being able to take somebody off the dribble and get to the free throw line. Uh, Domask just making the right pass. And Justin Harmon had a big cut. We're talking about cuts to the rim where <laughs> Coleman Hawkins can actually operate and, and throw the passes that he's able to operate. So uh, those veterans, like, that's just a steadiness. That's a high four for this team. And when they're clicking like that, you see the ceiling of an old team like that. No doubt about it. And yeah, I think you look at the physicality of, of Illinois when they win the rebounding battle the way that they did. And uh, in the second half, especially the free throw differential, like to have 26 free throws, I think Kansas shot 12 in the second half. I and mean, that's Illinois. And I, to their credit, like 
I mentioned them shooting a, a good amount of threes. There was a stretch where Kansas making a little bit of a run, and then finally they go down d- downhill, possession after possession. Terrence uh, picking up fouls, obviously uh, being able to get in the lane and, and draw contact. I love the, the shot fake and drive, driving a closeout by Quincy Garrier. And uh, those guys didn't really blink in, in those those crunch time moments. The fact that uh, that's a field play between, you know, Coleman has the ball in the mid post and Harmon cuts off like the top of the key slash, you know, starting to float towards the wing and he just goes right down the seam and, and Coleman finds him. And that's a that's a veteran play by Harmon to make that cut. It's a good vision by, by Coleman to be able to find him and deliver. And, and that when you I know Brad talked about it in the post game, but I mean, Coleman's 21 going on 22. He's the youngest guy on the court down the stretch. You got 24 year old Gary, a, you got two 23 year olds and Shannon and, and Damask, and then Harmon's 22 in, in his own right. So these guys have played a lot of basketball. They will certainly they'll have moments where you'll see uh, a team that's still, you know, trying to find cohesion. But I think for the most part, I mean, in, in terms of what we saw early last season. Yes, I know they, they did beat UCLA, and it's kind of funny that there were moments of, whoa, they, they look really good, and then it, it kind of falls apart uh, for a while. But uh, I, I feel like the the flow, the just kind of play off each other is, is there uh, more than it was last year uh, with this team. And I think that shows some unselfishness for, for guys like Damask. And uh, Harmon just seems like he's he's trying to make little plays, effort plays. And on that note, too, like – I saw Illinois diving on the floor. I saw Illinois jumping out of bounds to save loose balls, and uh, those are some things that, that lacked from last year's team too. It was just some of that, some of that extra grit and fire. And I, I just I like the vibe that I got from this team. It's only a forty minute game, and there's a lot more basketball to be played. But uh, that that was all encouraging for sure. And Derek Piper has good good reads of vibes. He's got a good history of reading vibes of teams. So the vibes uh, are on. <laughs> I, I but I agree with you. Uh, the other thing I love seeing, man. Terrence Shannon was dialed in. This game meant a ton to him. Uh, this is an exhibition game. It doesn't count. But whether it was backing up his words that he said to you, Derek, of, of I'm, I'm going to send Hunter home with a loss again, basically, uh, or going up against Kevin McCuller, his former Texas Tech teammate, they were talking the entire time. But to see Terrence with that killer instinct from the tip and all the way to the end of the game, that is so encouraging for me because we saw it at times last year at the end of games when it just felt like, hey, can, can you take over? You're the guy on this team. He took over from the start all the way through the finish. Uh, that was an All-American level performance against another All-American who's a phenomenal defender in Kevin McCullough. That was high-level stuff between those two. 100%. Yeah, I mean, Terrence channeled, especially that first half, he hits four threes and he loved that spot on the right wing. It looked like the UCLA second half version of Terrence where you got – you know, guys out there in Vegas saying, you know, he's Fran for sure. I remember you doing a story with him that he looks like a first round draft pick. If he shoots it like that, obviously uh, he, he's positioned himself to be that caliber of a player and uh, should be in, you know, if he keeps this up, all American type com- conversations. And I, I think it's great to have a high ceiling star because if you can channel that or run into that in a, a couple of games at the right times in March, that's that can you know, carry you to an elite eight, carry you to a final four. Or again, if it, that comes at the opportune time against the right opponent when you really need it. And, and Terrence is capable of that. Of course, consistency is important. Uh, but I think that he showed so much uh, in terms of his arsenal off the dribble, like the ability he, he flashed. It wasn't a ton, but there was a, a nice size up mid range pull up. And uh, he was able then to, to get into the lane and uh, be able to your euro step through McCuller, which is just, it seems like an unguardable play, a guy that can go downhill so effectively when he has the body control and kind of change it up on you and then get you off to the side. I mean, it's pretty much a blocking foul uh, every time if he wants it. And that's a guy that can go get one and, and be able to get into the teeth of that defense. And he's a, he's a good free throw shooter too. But yeah, just the emotion from him. I think that there were times where Terrence obviously was filling things out last year and uh, maybe didn't show that alpha dog. We, we know he's tough. We know he's a, a guy that, has talent and everything, but I think that obviously this one met meant differently. I'm not expecting him to kind of, you know, be barking as much against Eastern Illinois. And, um, but to just kind of be that tone setter, I think both with his play and then just with, with his emotion was, was something that you want from a guy that's has some, a lot of experience and, and now is familiar with the surroundings with, with Brad, with this team, with this Jersey. Uh, that, that's all great for Terrence. I just heard some words towards the sideline that I haven't heard from Terrence and I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Um, other things I want to hit on point guard play. It's going to be a thing we talk about Derek. 
until you're really comfortable with it. Ty Rogers started off this game really well, uh, used his size to his advantage, finished around the hoop, uh, got his first three buckets all at the rim, missed his last three, one or two from free throw, three assists, three turnovers in 25 minutes, was a plus one in the box score. The backup point guard tonight, Marcus Domask, yeah. was basically it. Uh, he, he went to Marcus Domask. We saw him already for a two-minute stretch. We saw Justin Harmon play 22 minutes, handled it a little bit. Uh, but we only saw Dre Gibbs Lawhorn for three minutes tonight. So what did you think of the point guard play? Yeah, you definitely got to highlight early Ty's ability to get to the basket and finish. And there were some really good moments there from ability to just attack and be aggressive and, and be able to finish at the rim. And we talked about throughout the offseason upping that efficiency around the basket for a guy that's that strong and that athletic. And, and that showed some encouraging signs for sure. And uh, the fact that, you know, the difference between Dewan Harris is thought of one of the top five to 10 point guards out there uh, versus whatever Illinois was running with uh, point guard wise didn't play out to be some huge disadvantage that swung the game one way or another. Uh, I think that's good, but uh, I wrote about this and I, I know it's still exhibition. I know that Brad would tell you that they don't have everything clicking in terms of their, their full play sheet offensively. But I think you see that not every possession, if not even half of them, are, are Ty Rogers in a ball screen trying to create something. This is an offense that uh, probably the most consistent part about it is, is Coleman ha handling it and operating in that high post and or towards out towards the, the three-point line. I know this one, they really extended him because of, of Dickinson guarding him, so they wanted to make him – come out and, and show. And if he wasn't, then Coleman would shoot that shot. And obviously he made that tonight, but uh, they have different guys they are going to handle and create and initiate it. And Ty can sometimes just be a connector uh, as someone, if he gets the ball, obviously the, to lead into that next pass or uh, go to the offensive glass too. So uh, there were moments when Ty especially was off the floor that I was like, okay, there's some possessions where you, you can see noticeably there's not a point guard out there. There's, there's some, you know, Illinois has to kind of get, they get stagnant and they kind of got to, create something on an ISO, which is why their assist totals are pretty low. Um, there are going to be some games where they don't make those threes, and it, it maybe won't look as pretty. When you make 40-plus percent from deep, then your offense all of a sudden looks like a, a thing of beauty. But uh, I, I do think it's going to be – and I, I mentioned it earlier, like late in games especially, it's going to be an experiment of, of what that looks like. Um, they didn't go in the portal and get one. And um, I think that I, – I think just in comparison to my expectations, probably the usage – of Ty or whoever's that point guard is probably lower than I would have expected, but I, I get it based on some of the other pieces that you have to make some plays. Yeah, it's Coleman's running a lot of offense. Marcus is running a lot of offense. And obviously you get Terrence and Justin Harmon off some of these ball screens. It's really interesting. A lot is on Brad Underwood. We've talked about that, and I, I continue to think of that. A lot's on them, but the ball movement of this team, Derek, is crisp. Like maybe they didn't have a lot of assists tonight, but, man, they moved the ball really well. Uh, and they shot it well tonight. So you you saw what it looks like when you got some shooters around Coleman Hawkins and Terrence Shannon. So I thought that was uh, really encouraging here. We'll get to some more of the people's questions here on our live YouTube stream. We appreciate you guys. We'll get to Super Chats. Any questions you guys send us, we'll get to them here coming up. Isaac Ambrose, our producer, gave us some questions. And one of the ones I find interesting, Alana started the game beside Shannon. So if we were doing first star, second star, three star like they did uh, in hockey, First star is obviously Terrence Shannon. Who's your second? I'm probably going Coleman. I know it. You know Quincy made a real run at it because I think it, his stretch there late in the game um, was really, really important. It seemed like Kansas was about to steal the momentum late and maybe run out of here with the win because Illinois uh, had some possessions. Where they turned it over three times in a row. Yep. Uh, McCuller made some plays. It seemed like they just then figured out, like, hey, if we get Hunter deep you know, within five feet of the basket, this seems to work instead of those little – like little runners or whatever he was doing around the free throw line early in the game. But um, then Quincy makes that – he makes the three, then he makes that shot fake drive, and, and he had a stretch. I know you had the stat. I think it was eight straight for Illinois yeah. at one point. So he makes a real close case of, of being the second star. But uh, I think Coleman with his three-point shooting, uh, some of his, his coverage and deflections defensively uh, definitely play into me putting him there. And that pass to Harmon, I mean, that's – as yeah. much on on Hawkins seeing the floor than as it is Harmon finding that seam and getting to the basket. Yeah, when both coaches singled out Coleman, like Bill Self singled out Coleman Hawkins and said that we couldn't guard that guy. We, did, we didn't know what to do with him. And then defensively, Brad Underwood said he was amazing. He's off the charts. And, yeah, Hunter had to work for his. He got 22 points, but 20 shots to get there. 
Um, I think that's pretty dang good for Coleman Hawkins, just giving up a lot of size, obviously, to Hunter Dickinson. But, yeah, Quincy did make a run at it, I think. That that final five, six minutes, you saw a guy who I, – I said this last game, Derek, if, if he's your seventh or eighth best guy on this team, now maybe he's your fourth or fifth or sixth, but that's, that's a dang good player uh, that you can go to in those situations. And I thought, we know he can shoot threes. Uh, we know he can rebound, but that off-the-bounce game, if he can combine all of that, that's just a really good all-around player that you can put with Shannon and Hawkins and, and Domask. Like, that, that's what is going to make Shannon and Hawkins so much better when you have another guy who can do that and another guy in Marcus Domask and another guy in Justin Harmon. And then you hope eventually Ty Rogers and some of these other guys. Yeah, and I liked the move to put Quincy in the starting lineup. I know we talked a lot during the summer and, and really since then of, of what the starting five would look like. And I thought, you know, the one that they rolled out tonight uh, is what they would ultimately go with, in, in particular with this matchup, because you got K.J. Adams, a, a physical and athletic four man, was uh, Kansas' small ball five last year, playing the four. So to have Quincy in that matchup, I just feel like, uh, especially when you're going to face some of those guys like a Dante Scott around the league and uh, Quincy's physicality uh, to be able to kind of counter and match that. And I, I think that uh, while Luke obviously played really well against Ottawa, not not a great night for him tonight, but um, Quincy's ability to kind of do that shot fake and drive uh, is probably a separator in terms of uh, maybe being a little bit more dynamic of an offensive player than what Luke is. Um, you know, Luke more catch and shoot. Quincy maybe can do a little bit more around the basket and uh, a little bit more off the dribble too. So uh, this was a, a really nice showing for him. And yeah, just as, as a group of transfers, uh, you, you see the the value of being the, able to make this an old team and go to the portal and looks pretty good so far. Yeah, Isaac asked, most underperforming Illini. I think we just say the minutes were really low for Dre Gibbs Allhorn, three minutes tonight. And then Dane Danger, nine. Yeah. Now, you could go to Coleman, you got Quincy. This is a really deep front court, right? And, and not a lot of these guys, not everybody's going to get to eat that day. And that's why it's going to be interesting to see who's upset at some point or if anybody gets upset or if they are all bought in like they talked about into winning at some point. But Danger only nine minutes was a minus four defensively. They took a took a licking a little bit when he was on the court and only had one shot, one of four from the free throw line. So he did get to the free throw line, no rebounds. He just didn't make a big impact tonight, but that's where it's key. They have Coleman and Quincy that can do those things. Yeah, it was a tough matchup with Dane because, you know, he's – He's more of that, that lane lock big guy who just doesn't have the size uh, against Hunter, you know, 7 1. And uh, yeah, they, they put him in some ball screens. Uh, and I know that was something that was concerning down the stretch of last year where Dane kind of got caught in no man's land in the drop coverage. And not to say when the offense makes a play, it, it means it's bad, de bad defense. But um, Hunter really struggled to get going. I mean, it was about 10 minutes he didn't score, then he banks in a three. And uh, it was, you know, Dane coming out there and they put him in some pick and rolls and they were throwing lobs to, to Hunter that they weren't getting before that. So uh, I know that in the post game, Brad mentions, you know, I I watched a couple of ball screen coverages and when Coleman was out and I just had to put him back in, that was Dane being out there getting a little exploited. So uh, there was a difference there. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you're going to have nights where it's not going to be somebody's night. And the good thing about this deep team is that you kind of press different buttons and feel that out and uh, be able to, to find the right mix and whatnot. Uh, I didn't think I, I mentioned already. I didn't think Luke was great. I, I know he made a couple of turnovers and um, maybe his uh, lack of athleticism showed at times defensively. But again, it's just kind of nitpicking on a night that you almost feel pretty positive about. Yeah. And this is where the depth is just so encouraging. Like the fact that they, those guys don't have to make big impacts and you can still beat the number one team in the country. Even if Kansas ends up that, I don't know, but they're probably going to win the Big 12. I mean, they're most likely to win the Big 12. I know there's some good teams there, but they're the favorite to win it. So uh, I don't think you take anything away from that. All right, uh, let's bring up Hunter. I love everything about him. He's a villain. Yes, I know Illinois fans hate him. I know Illinois fans hated that I tweeted that after it looked like a flagrant foul for Hunter Dickinson. But, boy, the way he embraces being a villain, he's not afraid to do it. Uh, I was kind of disappointed in Hunter. I asked him what his relationship with the Illini fans is, and he said, oh, damn, that's a good question. Without saying damn, he said another swear word. Um, and then he followed up and said, I can't answer that right now. Sorry. Uh, I wish you would have dove into that a little bit because he usually isn't afraid to, to say anything about Illini fans, but felt like they got into his head a little bit early. Mm -hmm. But Hunter's a very good player. Uh, Hunter's a very good player, but Illinois made him work for it, 22 points. 
20 shots to get there. Uh, I, I'm I'm upset we're not going to see him back in, in State Farm Center, at least this year, unless Illinois does a home-and-home home with Kansas maybe next year because I think Hunter has another year of eligibility, Derek. I, I love everything about that he's brought to college basketball. We need villains, and he's a really good villain. I appreciate him for his villain role. <laughs> it's very uh, – I mean, it gives you reason to, to get fired up about certain matchups, and um, he's very talented. Yeah, he's a, he's a very talented offensive player, obviously – um, didn't think he had his best game. Like he didn't look very good for stretches of this game with his finishing around the basket. And uh, it did look like he was frustrated and, and just, I, I don't want to speak for him, but I, I think he'd be all right if this is the last time he sees Illinois. Like I, it just kind of gets that vibe where he's just, he's just over, I wouldn't say overwhelmed, but he's over having to face this team and get asked about Illinois and everything. And uh, I was a little disappointed as well, uh, him not coming through on your question. He should have just taken the I had to assume last route. time. Yeah. I had Sumu against Iowa. Remember, he's like, we don't like them. They don't like us. I think that's that's what it boils down to, obviously, with Hunter and Illinois. And um, I wish he would have leaned into that a little bit more. But uh, I wish more kids – like, it's fun. It's fun to do this. Like, in the NBA and the pros, we get this. And everyone's always just afraid to rattle anybody nowadays because we're all so soft. Like, like <laughs> we don't like them. They don't like us. That's what part of makes this fun, right? Like – you think about those Iowa games. Listen, you don't like each other. You can respect each other, though. Um, so I don't. I don't mind what Iowa yeah. says that or, or Garza says what. Like you know what? That's fun. So I wish more embraced that kind of needling, and, and I wish Terrence would have embraced it a little bit in his post game. If we're going to be fair to Hunter, like Terrence and Kevin McCuller were, there was something there, and I saw I saw some of Shannon's family after the after the game. They there there was more to it than just that. I was my friend i love playing against him like th this meant something to them and i think that's great you could see it in the way they played uh and it brought energy from the crowd it brought energy from those players so it was fun it was and i, I know we gotta we're probably gonna get this i might as well bring it up sam's question and we got asked by you know some orange crush about yeah. what was up with mcculler staring down the bench i, I honestly don't know yeah um, we didn't get mcculler after the game if mcculler no. i thought they would have made him available they gave us kj adams instead so uh, McCuller got hurt, which probably wasn't out there. Um, I guess he's okay, Bill Self said. But, yeah, I, I wanted to ask him, Sam, like, what what were you staring at? Was it Tim Anderson? Was it just he wanted to point out the bench? Like, is that what was getting fired up? I don't know, but it was working for him. So he looked great. He he was killing Illinois, uh, especially in that Kicking. first half. Because um, it, was, it was definitely him and Shannon talking back and forth. But even when Shannon was on the court, like, after every basket, Kevin was looking over – at the bench. I don't know if somebody said something to him early that, that rubbed him the wrong way, if there was something lingering maybe from, you know, a guy that's been in the portal and and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, I mean, two guys that ended up leaving Mark Adams' squad uh, out of Texas Tech. I know you said, you know, how are the Red Raiders fans feeling right now when these two guys are going off. But uh, I don't know. I, I was here would for it. Been, it was, would have been like an Illinois fan if Tevian Jones would have played Brandon Pajimski <laughs> last year. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, but, yeah, those guys were starters on a Sweet 16 team Yeah, uh, for cool. Texas Tech and now doing their thing elsewhere. Yeah. Um, Isaac asks, should the Atlanta make this an annual event? I don't think they will. Um, I think this was near and dear to Brad and Bill's heart because they've been to Maui several times. There's somebody who went to Maui in 2018. That place is special, and Lahaina, where it is held, got hit ridiculously hard. It's just a beautiful – downtown area i remember running into josh whitman and his wife hope uh you know when I, my wife and i were going down there my wife's pregnant and um it's just um it's, it's a beautiful area uh so i think it was near and dear to their heart and brad i still think likes the things that you can do in a closed scrimmage where you can stop coach him i asked him if he would like to do this again i think he'd be open to it but i think it has to be a kansas or a duke or a, something like that where they can raise money for something great. Bill sounded very open to it. Bill Self sounded very open to it. But I think you saw it with Tennessee, Michigan State. It's great, man. Uh, I think it's really great for college basketball to do these things. And Brad said they raised $1 million for Maui Relief today. That's that's fantastic. So um, I know there's a hubbub of where these tickets too expensive and $40 is really expensive for, for those higher end seats. But there were 10,000 plus people here and, and to raise a million dollars is really cool. So I'd love it because we get to see it and fans get to see it and we got something to talk about, but uh, I'm still skeptical whether they do this yearly, Derek. Yeah, I doubt it. I doubt it yearly because coaches do like, I think they like the privacy of it. Number one, I Control. think for the, especially for the, yeah, 
especially for the younger guys. Like Illinois is an old team for the most part, so you, you can get by with. I think ideally, if you if you wanted to look back and say Draven Gibbs Lawhorn's development would have been better to play him 25 minutes behind closed doors against Kansas, yeah, probably. But then again, I think it only takes a lot of positives for this because they you get forced into late game scenarios and just crunch time and and a real game before it actually counts. You know, Marquette's going to be here in what three weeks, so mm-hmm. uh, I think that's great for them. On the other side. You know, Kansas is playing in the Maui Invitational, so that's uh, a big asset for them to utilize, again, for um, something that feels like a real game but doesn't hurt you or, or obviously Illinois would love for this one to help you. Quad one win at home, quad one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, for the viewer, I, I get it. Like, I want as much of it as possible. I would imagine fans would as well. I mean, especially, you know, when we cover the team, we want to – we get asked all the time, you know, who's looking good and what are our expectations. These, these are types of – <laughs> These are the type of things that can tell us things about that. So yeah. um, I'm always jealous when they have close scrimmages and I got to send out texts and hopefully someone's hunting down a box store and whatnot. But uh, yeah, yeah. on the note of the um, – I don't want to spend too much time on the, the attendance or anything because I know that's played out a lot on our message boards and <laughs> people are going to have their opinions. Uh, I, th- I do think ultimately – I can't speak for everybody's pocket – that $40 for, uh, for this – it is reasonable, I think, for the most part, you know, uh, in terms of if this I think that should have been the price from the beginning. I think they outpriced people too yeah. early. I think they kind of messed that up of cheapest ticket was seventy five, eighty five dollars um, early on. And this place should have been packed. Like I, I would have imagined for self coming back for the number one team for Dickinson. 5 p.m. on a Sunday. Yeah. Like, people in Chicago can get home by then. Yeah, this this thing should have been loaded. So I. I Again, those that I were think here. that's fair. I think that's fair criticism. Like, yeah, I, I think if you know, forty from the beginning, you probably would have gotten more people here, or you know, thirty bucks at the top end of it. Like, if you yeah. have that top ribbon where you can only get thirty well, people, or, or just get people tickets. get people in the door, and then maybe uh, portions of the concessions go to the charity too. And like, it's easy for me to sit here and say it yeah. after the, after the fact, but I I did I was a little disappointed that it wasn't more. Um, more full, but then again, the yeah. the environment was really good. Like the, the yeah. fans that were here were very much into it. I'm sure that people were watching at home or uh, enjoying Robbie Hummel. I don't know about Andy Cass. Play by play, that's that's his background, right? Uh, <laughs> Kevin, they showed maturity last year. We might have crumbled uh, when can or last year we might have crumbled when Kansas made the late run. Yeah, I mean they just. We talked about it, Derek. Like those those older guys looked like older guys, and somebody else said um, that had to be the oldest lineup possible. I mean, Coleman Hawkins yeah. was the youngest guy on the floor for the final four minutes for Illinois. That's insane. Coleman Hawkins, he's still twenty one, I guess. He's turning twenty two this season, but he's a four year player, and he was the youngest guy on the floor for Illinois. It's crazy. Yeah, no, I, Illinois was not good in close games last year. Like you look at. Uh, and, and prior to, you know, obviously when you had IO, one of the best closers in college basketball, if not the best during that stretch, uh, even the following year, an old team with Kofi and uh, Trent and, and those type of guys, like Brad Underwood's teams during a previous four year window or whatever it was, was great. And those I had the stat on you know, two possessions or less decided by last year. They were not good in those games. They lost, uh, you know, when they were like tied or leading late against, you know, at Iowa, at Indiana. Um, even at Purdue when they, they made that comeback. So uh, to see them have more of that composure and poise late, yes, there were some a couple of possessions that I think that they would like to have back. But uh, when you're an older team, and, yeah, that stat's crazy. I mean, Coleman's a four-year, one of the old-school four-year guys, and he's your youngest guy on the court. Is was, insane. Was Terrence the second youngest? Is it Domask older than him? Because I know Har- Quinc- Quincy and Harmon are 24 years old, right? I think Harmon's 22. He's listed okay. – Okay. Um, at 22 years old. And then, yeah, Damascus and Shannon are 23, and uh, Quincy's 24. Insane. Kevin, Purdue and Michigan State are head and shoulders better than us. All right, Derek, this is kind of the, the level of how much do we put in this game. Um, listen, Michigan State's got an unbelievable backcourt. Um, they're really good in the backcourt. But that team didn't win a ton of Big Ten games. We were 11-8 and eight in the Big Ten last year. They got to replace Joey Hauser. I still think Purdue in the Big Ten – is just the most consistent thing is when you got Zach Eady, you're probably winning 13, 14 plus games. Like, and it's, he's just ridiculous. 
but Illinois probably got more overall talent than Purdue outside of Edie, right? And then they're they're big, they're older, uh, but it's just Matt Painter uh, deserves a lot of credit for what they do. I'd still pick those teams ahead of Illinois at this point, most likely, but I do think you feel more comfortable after tonight. I think it's okay to feel that comfort that, hey, they can compete with those guys. They can push those guys. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, you got the talent. Um, you have NBA guys and, and Shannon and Coleman who played like NBA guys tonight when they do that. And you got uh, other veterans, obviously. Um, depth. There's, there's a lot to like. I mean, this team can beat anybody as they could last year. Even when Illinois was disappointing on the whole last year, they could beat anybody when they were at their best, as they did against UCLA, as they did against Texas. I, I think with veterans, this team will be more steady. It'll be less of a roller coaster. So it, it's really more about that consistency. I think with this team and um, I, I think on another note, like Kansas, people will question uh, some might question uh, even me. It's, it's hard not to be like, is that the number one team in the country? Yeah. Not, I said it to you at one point. <laughs> they're not that deep. Um, that's one thing, especially Arteria Morris being out of the picture now that that hurts them quite a bit. Um, Hunter has to be a stud for them to, to really, you know, obviously tap into their ultimate upside. I didn't feel like he was that tonight. Um, Zach Eady will be a lot more of a problem because he's more of that, you know, root so hard to root him out from around the basket. And I, I didn't feel like Hunter presented that challenge to Illinois a, a ton tonight, as obviously Eady would. Um, yeah, I, I sit there and I wonder, Luca Garza busted his ass. <laughs> like he was just watching him. It was just like the effort level that guy gave, the toughness he had. Like Hunter feels like he's got to turn it on sometimes and yeah. like that, that's where like Luca like he crushed Kofi with his just effort and tenacity in his first matchup with him right and then Kofi's like oh I have to match that and eventually he did uh Hunter it just felt like yeah sometimes that doesn't turn on with him it's not consistent with him no I agree I, I agree with that and, and I'm sure Bill will work on that and that's that's kind of another note and not to uh, of course you could spend hours trying to dissect what this means but uh, when you talk about the best coaches in college basketball, you, you think about who they are at the end, you know, who they are in March, not you know what their teams do in October and November. So um, I, I think Ouchie almost, brain, Bill Self wanted to lose this. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I, I just think that, you know, who Kansas is tonight is, could be a lot different than who they are down the road. You know, they got two uh, studs. That's for sure. They got two studs. Uh, I, I know that El Marco Jackson, uh, top 20 guard plays tonight. He didn't do a whole lot, but. You know, when you got a freshman that's that highly touted, maybe down the line they're they're in better shape. But uh, I, you know, Illinois looks like that against. Uh, you said it right. You know, they're not. They don't look out athleted. They don't look out talented. They look like they belong with the number one team. I think they will um, with Purdue and, and Michigan State as well. But yeah, I like those teams too. I, I think that you know, Lawyer and uh, Smith are going to take step forwards as, as sophomores, and then Michigan State's got the the guard play Tyson and, and Hogard and. You know, Illinois is rolling no point cards sometimes, so we'll see how that works. Yeah, that's what we're going to get to here with Caleb. I was a little worried, he says, about our athleticism with Damask and Goody and Harmon. I came away feeling good about it. Harmon's a pretty good athlete. Uh, still have work to do defensively, concerned about the playing time of freshmen and Harris. Listen, we can get concerned about playing time of freshmen, but, I mean, they, they better get used to it because this is an old team. It's a team that wants to win. As we can see tonight, they can win. Um, so I, I think – if you're expecting Dre Gibbs Law to play 20, 25 minutes this season a game, that's probably not going to happen. Amani, I think, know, knows uh, that he's got to work his butt off, and we've seen it uh, from him. He might need those guys. Uh, Dre Gibbs Law is going to have to play for this team, make some buckets, because that that is still one concern for me. It's, it's not maybe the overall athleticism about this team, Derek. It's about do they have a guy who can go get a bucket or break down a defense from the point guard position? That's still going to come up. That's still a weakness of this team. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you look at the shot making tonight and, and really Terrence and Coleman carrying a big load in terms of the perimeter shot making. I, I think that uh, there'll be stretches where you need a shot in the arm uh, in terms of going to get the bucket. And I think Draven gibbs Lawhorn can give that to you, obviously. Um, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I, I think Harmon's a pretty good athlete, uh, strong, able to attack the basket, rebound. Uh, I, I think that shooting is still something, while it looked look good tonight, is something – coupled with point guard play that you still kind of pinpoint and, and, and say those could be the potential weak spots of this team. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that that's one thing with on the note of Damask and, and Goody, there'll be teams that maybe exploit that in terms of maybe you don't 
roll with that combo as much against a more athletic team because uh, then you got to have one of those guys either guard a, a big physical four or a, a real twitchy explosive wing. Uh, but that's great when you have different options and have depth to kind of piece that together matchup by matchup. Yeah, you throw Sincere in there uh, for, for five, ten minutes and see what he can do. But, yeah, Domas, give, Domas gives up stuff, right? Like yeah. uh, defensively, he's usually in the right spot, but – He's going to give up some stuff defensively. You just hope he makes up for it on the other end. And he has the few times we've seen him. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, McCuller got him a couple of times. Um, I, I think Illinois in transition, uh, they could obviously clean some things up with that um, as well. But, yeah, D- Damask with his feel, with his passing. he'll, he'll And he's just never – I know Brad says he's never sped up. Like that, There was a that play where he kind of has that turnaround jumper in the lane. Uh, I think that was at some point in the, in the first half. Just yeah. super smooth. I mean, he looks like he's shooting that in his in his driveway. So like, I love I that. You about and I'm him. like, I looked at you. And I'm like, he's got 11 points. Where'd that come from? Yeah. Like yeah. he made his three, and I'm like, how many points? Oh, he's got 11. Uh, he's he's a really good player. I've been. Yeah. Really, that's probably the guy I've been most encouraged about in the two viewings we've seen. I mean, Quincy, great tonight. Um, you know he's going to rebound. I guess still got to see another offensive performance like that. Um, I feel good about what he's going to bring to the team. But Marcus Domas, the first two games, probably the guy I'm more encouraged about after seeing him live than anybody else. Yeah, I think back to and not to like overuse this point on people that were a little skeptical early, but I remember saying, "All right, Illinois has their first portal visitor. It's Marcus Domas from Southern." People, some people were like, "Really? Is he good enough?" And he's probably your third best player. Like yes. I, I think, yeah, I, I think he he looks that part. I expect him to to be a big, significant contributor, and and, and to kind of circle back real fast on the note of the freshman and uh, sincere. Number one, it's early, especially for the freshman, um, and number two, I mean, big time programs had that had that situation. Like if you come into a deep team, an older team, then the younger guys don't play, and if they end up feeling some some way about it, then they they obviously. Uh, might, might move on, but Illinois is trying to win games, and that's just the reality of of what the situation is. You can't you can't overthink that and be like, well, we got to tinker some things and, and make people happy. The guys that want to be here will stay through it, and it's a long season too. I, I wouldn't write off. Yeah. I think Draven's going to have his moments. I think Amani, especially when you're in foul trouble, but just in general. I mean, we saw tonight against a little bit more legit size how scoring around the basket is going to be a, a little more challenging for him because he's not a – a big off the floor type of guy at six foot seven, six foot eight, but his his effort and his his rebounding are there. I thought he fought Dickinson a couple of times really well. So uh, there'll be some learning moments, but um, there's a lot of basketball we play. Yeah, when those freshmen came in, they looked like freshmen, but that's okay. That's why that's why they have these yeah. things. Seneca, thoughts on Illinois' vulnerability to the press? A lot of Marcus Damask having a very compressed tonight, Derek. Yeah, I think that there was. Uh, I don't know if it was Marcus or Terrence at one point. Late in that second half, they got kind of stuck a little bit when they really pushed up and pressured. And, and with, again, without a point guard out there, it makes you a, a little queasy. But I, you can break presses with different things. Like, uh, you know, D Brown was a weave through guy. There's, there's guys that, you know, one player can just, you know, find the, the gap and, and explode through it. Other teams use it with passing. I think Illinois could pass their way through it. I think also when you're playing Coleman at the five, if it's going to be a man-to-man press, why not have just Coleman? Obviously, if Dickinson's out there against him, Dickinson's not guarding him 94 feet. So um, there are different ways Illinois can kind of go against that. But at the same time, I, I do think that, again, it will be interesting to kind of monitor yep. what this team looks like in late game without a point guard, without a guy that is a natural floor general. But I, I think that, yeah, Damas passing vision, uh, Hawkins as well. But um, there's there's potential for that to be problemsome at times. Big country. We were wondering about where Harmon will fit in, but now I wonder where Sincere Harris will fit in. I think Sincere Harris is your flame throwing reliever, yeah. right? Like I think he's the guy that's a specialty guy right now. Maybe he evolves into more of that next season where he can have the ball in his hands. But right now on this team. He's the guy when you don't have energy, Derek, when you're down 10 to UCLA or you're down 10 to Texas, you go throw him in there and he can change a game. And he can just give you that spark off the bench. Now, does that happen as much this year? I don't know, but I I think he's got to understand and and accept that that's his role this year. He's not the guy they're going to run offense for, but when he comes in for the, whether it's three minutes here or 10 minutes here, it's to, to bring that ridiculous tenacity and energy. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Specialist is, is absolutely what his game is right now. He, he, to his credit, he did have a nice drive at one point and, and finish, and uh, that was something last year. He just could get to the basket a number of times, but sometimes you know the finishing rate wasn't ultimately there. But um, when Illinois needs that defensive spark, when they want to turn up the heat on somebody, when they are a little bit maybe lifeless and flat that Brad feels like, he's a guy that flips that switch. And um, I think that's still big picture on him. He could – his, his upside is still decent. Now he, he's got to work a decent amount on his shot to actually um, really round out the rest of his game. But like the the athletic traits, the defense, the the effort, there's things to work with. Obviously, with sincere, but uh, you just hope that as with anybody that is caught up in this battle for minutes is able to keep that that team first mindset. Understand that there will be fluctuations as the season goes, based on certain matchups and what the team needs at certain times. Uh, and if they can keep that that uh, stay centered within that and be a, a tight knit unit, this team will be fine. Um, I think last year there were uh, too many selfish interests and obviously that pulled them apart. Uh, if Illinois can, obviously Sincere's going to have to fight through that, Nico, Draven, uh, on down the list. But I agree. I mean, Harmon's more experienced. He's more offensively capable. Um, and I, not that they both can't find a role. Harmon's just definitely bigger this, at this stage. Double A, speaking of Harmon, Harmon gave me Andres Felice vibes. Whoa, whoa. Don't go there with me yet. <laughs> We've mentioned this. Um, I, I will tell you that that was something that I I wrote about in my what it means as soon as he committed because it was something that was whispered around of hey yeah. he's, he's got a little bit of this to him and I look it's it's like saying you know Jace Butler plays a little bit like Jalen Brunson doesn't mean he's Jalen Brunson and look people can I know some of these names can well if it were up to me Derek Andres Felice would have a dang jersey hanging I, in this I, place with how much I loved watching that's... him. Oh uh, man, he was great. No, but J- Justin, Justin is. Uh, I'm really impressed with him. The last couple of times we've seen him too, just because he just wants to win. Yeah, he, he wants this opportunity. He just wants to win. I get that. That's kind of the Andres Felice thing. Kind of a junkyard dog from that spot. Andres was a better ball handler. I think creator for himself, finisher around the hoop. But yeah, Justin does some of those things, and it's ne- it's necessary. They needed somebody like that. You wish it was a, a league guard. Um, but still, he's, he adds a lot to, to this team, and I don't think it's always going to be 10 points, but he can go get you 10 points in a certain game. It was just the energy on the glass at certain points, the, the cut, like those little things that you need to do to win, uh, he's doing. And, and for a guy that was averaging 12, 13 points a game last year at Utah Valley, I think he knows what his role is, and that's what's great about having older guys. Like Marcus Damas, this is his best opportunity, right? Quincy Gerhair has been at two other places and missed the tournament the last two years. Like those guys have been through it, and, and they know that hey, maybe, maybe I don't get my numbers, but if I win, that's good for me. That's good for everybody. Right? No, that's well said. Yeah, Harmon's never played a tournament game. Um, Damask hasn't played in tournament games. So th- those guys want that. They're willing to sacrifice for that. At least based on what we've seen so far, it just didn't. It hasn't seemed to me like tonight that Harmon was feeling a certain type of way because he wasn't getting his shots up or uh, letting any any kind of usage or role dictate you know how he's going to play. He's going to go out there and, and try to make effort plays, be really gritty, and, and try to just be around the ball, as Brad Underwood has talked about. And uh, there was a situation, you know, it was, I think it was late in the shot clock. He baseline drive and kind of has that reverse finish, which is nice. I mean, he's got some scoring potential. This is a guy mm-hmm. that put up close to 20 a game in the NIT. So um, he's got that to him. He's he's older. He's he's been in, in some some bigger games just based on the scale where he was. But uh, he wants to come in and win. Um, and so does some of these other guys. So I think that's great so far, obviously. All right. We're wrapping this thing up. But Kyle asked after watching the scrimmage, I'll throw you in here, too, Derek. Does Jeremy and Derek have their guy for this season? Is it Hansbury? I like I like Amani a lot. I think he could be a great player to build around. Um, but uh, do you have a guy on this team, Derek? Uh, and his recruitment, Hansberry was my guy for yeah. sure. Um, and he actually got here. Like that, yeah. that's a rarity. Yeah, um, it'd be easy to to attach myself to Damask. Which if if Go you're giving it. me if you're giving me that opportunity, then I'll, I'll gladly take it. I, I just I think he's really good. I, I think he's got a ceiling to be a all conference player potentially uh, on a really good team that that has a stat line that's going to get filled up. I think with assists with. Um, a decent amount of, you know, some rebounds, uh, nothing crazy. But uh, if he's putting up double figures with, you know, three, four assists with four or five rebounds, he's on a winning team. I think he can do a lot for you. So uh, I just like his the way he 
the way he thinks about the game, like some of the cuts he makes, some of the passes he makes. Uh, but Har- Harmon's got some of that to him too, and I just I- I'm pretty high on who Marcus can be. I mean, I'm not going to take Terrence Shannon, but man, that dude's really good. <laughs> like he's really like he looks all American good in the times that we've seen him. But the guy I'm going to say is another really good player, but Coleman Hawkins, man. I think just playing with these players is going to take his game up a notch. Like I think he's getting better. His shot is going in more. Uh, looks a little like he's got a little bit more arc on it, Derek. He's shooting it with more confidence as well. Uh, and what he did against – I thought he basically erased Hunter from this game. And what he yeah. did, his production on both ends of the floor was just as good, if not better, than what Hunter did tonight. Uh, and then – he just makes everybody around him better, just like Marcus Damas does. So I, I think Coleman's game can really come alive, and I think he can take a next step. Like, I think Terrence Shannon is the better player uh, for Illinois this season, but it would not shock me if Coleman Hawkins is the one drafted or drafted higher because of what he can do for a team. Like, you and I were talking during the game, like, you put him on a Miami Heat or a Golden State Warriors – that guy can find a role in the NBA, what we've seen, what we saw from him tonight. So um, I, I just think we shouldn't overlook that Coleman Hawkins could go up another level. I mean, both him and Terrence Shannon do. Like, we can talk all about these newcomers, these freshmen, these transfers. Those are your two guys. Your two best players have to play really well, and they need more support around them for you to go anywhere this season. Those are the guys that CBS needs to be doing features on going to a Sweet 16, right? Like, those are the guys. Um, so I, I've been encouraged by those guys, but Coleman especially. Yeah, I mean, I think the way – and now he started off hot last year shooting the three, hit five threes in the opener, I think, we get, uh, whoever that, that was against. But um, I, I like the confidence. I, I like the the catch and shoot, how it looked coming off the hand. Uh, I know there's been talk of maybe a little bit more arc on his shot as well. And uh, while there were points in time, whether it was – back when Illinois was pursuing Ray J Dennis or, you know, going through the off season that, Hey, we don't want to put too much of the playmaking role on Coleman again, you know, the following season, there's a lot on him again. I, mm-hmm. A lot of the offense is on him to, to make reads and, and use him as that, that, that connect or that offensive hub or whatever you want to call it. So uh, I think they're, we'll see if he can limit some of the mistakes. There's times where I think off the dribble, he tries to do a little bit too much, um, took a step back, but uh, he's a really good player. Yeah, I mean, defensively, he can guard anybody. Um, he's very impactful. And offensively, when he's shooting it and spacing it like that, that that can neutralize a really good low post guy like a, like a Hunter Dickinson because they're uncomfortable guarding out there. And then you kind of maybe don't look – you probably don't credit Coleman with some of the, the drives to the basket for Shannon or, or some of the cuts, but because you have a five-man that's faced out, that presents a lot of that opportunity for Shannon to go downhill without a guy waiting for him or uh, someone to back cut like a Damask or Harmon because Coleman provides that spacing. So uh, I do think that he's he's very much a key to this. It, a lot of times, five out offense once again, mm-hmm. um, but there are, there's more. It seems like there's a little more. There's more structure. There's more cutting. There's more than older guys around him. So I've uh, been very encouraged by what I've seen from him, and hopefully he continues to shoot it pretty well because I think that's a huge key. All right, Derek, I think we have successfully gotten people away from the Bears game uh, (laughs) 27-7. 27-7. Right now, early in the third quarter. uh, Illinois provided some entertainment uh, during that as well. Just a really encouraging performance. Thank you to everybody that's on our live YouTube channel. Hit the like button on your way out. Subscribe to us. Hit the notifications bell uh, on our YouTube channel. For all you listening on the podcast, appreciate you guys. Give us a rating and review wherever you get your podcast. Derek Piper, any final thoughts? Final four? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I will have a story. I talked with a bunch of the guys who were uh, on Bill Self's teams. Uh, Sean Harrington, Marcus Griffin, Serge McClain, and talked to Bill and, and Brad, obviously, about uh, tonight. So I'll have a story on that. Derek will have his takeaways from there. But then we got, what, eight, nine more days before another game, Derek? That, this, yeah. is a big, this is a big tease. That's all this was. I enjoyed every bit of it. So uh, give me that every uh, preseason and, and I'll be happy. But yes, there'll be a lot of time to to sit on this one. And I think Illinois fans will be just fine where the, the mind will go after beating number one here in this building. Um, I think a lot of fans will enjoy that. But uh, really, obviously, looking forward to the opener and, and another huge marquee matchup against Marquette. Not too far down the line. 
All right. For Derek Piper, I'm Jeremy Warner. Everybody have a great night. Take care of each other. We'll talk to you next time right here on the Online Enquirer podcast.